Blessings, Lafayette family and Facebook friends. My daily message for Wednesday, May 18th. And I remind you that daily messages and lots of great stuff are at FountainChurchTallahassee.org. And join us every week for worship, Sunday at 1030. My scripture today is Hebrews 13, 15. Through him, then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. This is the word of the Lord. In Africa, I discovered one of the major dilemmas in feeding the hungry. I was visiting Burundi, which is right next to Rwanda and just below the Democratic Republic of Congo. And there were many farms owned by local people, local tribes, and by families. And certainly the land seemed so abundant even though some of it was difficult to farm because of hilly conditions and there were terraces and the like. But you see, every time a family gives birth to two or three or more sons, when they pass, the farm is divided amongst the sons. Well, you don't have to be a mathematician to figure out that after several generations, the part of the farm that's given to the next rising sons is tiny and very often is not large enough to support that new young family. And there's a story that the Christian pastors share in many of these desperate areas. And they use Psalm 126 as their guide. You see, many families face the prospect of their grain running out before the year runs out. Around April, many families are still eating, but by May, the grain has gone. And the story is told that a young boy comes excitedly to his father and says, Father, we do have grain. I found a huge leather sack of grain in the pen above the goats hung on a hook. Let's take that grain and let's have mom feed us. And the father began to cry, saying, Son, we cannot eat that grain. That is the seed grain that we will use to plant the next season's crops. If we eat it now, we will have nothing then. And so the father had to listen to the cries of his young children, cries of hunger for almost a month, barely surviving starvation. And then when the rains were beginning to come, the boys and their father, weakened from lack of proper nutrition, go out into the fields and spread that precious grain because they believe in the harvest. They believe that God will restore them. I pray that we will believe in the harvest that we will be willing to give sacrificially, not out of our abundance, but out of our desperation. May we continue to give and bless those who are hungry and thirsty or who seek righteousness or justice. May we not simply throw out a few crumbs and be satisfied, but may we believe that God's harvest will bless all. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that we are called to trust in the harvest and that we are encouraged to be sacrificial in our love and in our giving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ.